Right, it's time that we started actually getting commercial flights. Key benefit being that commercial flights pay quite a lot more than general aviation does. Each time a general aviation plane lands, we get $500. But if you compare that to every time we land a small commercial flight, we get $2,500. That's quite a difference. As it is, we're more or less breaking even just with our nine general aviation stands covering all of what we've built so far and all of the contractors and other people that we've hired. I've obviously hired way more people than I need right now and I have built far more terminal than I need right now. But even with all of that excess, it's essentially breaking even. So, time to start making money. Press F to bring up the flight planner. Now you can see there's restricted times. Commercial flights cannot fly at night until you've researched night flights. General aviation have been taking off during the night and they don't seem to care. <laughs> Right, um, so, flights. At the moment, we have nothing available and nothing assigned. If we go back to our tutorial guide, we need to accept a contract. So, back to this menu. Um, that's under Economy, Offered Contracts. We can filter this down to Airlines. There are quite a lot to choose from. At this point in time, I do not know what actual difference you get between the star ratings of these different airlines. My theory is it's to do with the size of the plane, but I don't really know. So a 1900D on a 3 star, um, 1900D on a 3 star, yeah I think that's likely to be it. So the 1 and 2 stars, you're getting the DHC-6, the Cessna 208. Oh, they've got a 1900D as well. It's a bit of a puzzle. I'll be honest with you, I don't know what the actual deal is, but I do suspect it's to do with the size of the flights. So I'm going to sign up our three-star contracts for now. And let's go with... I always like flight penguin just because I like the symbol. I'm going to uh, well, accept that contract as well for the moment. So if we go back to our flight planner and push our guide out of the way, you can see we've got three different airlines that we can get contracts for or we'll get uh, flights for. At the moment, flight penguin is offering zero flights and Trinity Aviation is offering zero flights. Havana is offering four. But when you select Havana, only one appears. But there is a little four up in this corner. What that means is there are four flights of the same type, of the same time, for four days in a row. So if I place this I can't put it too early, obviously we've already passed this time, we have to book it into the future. If I place this here at 1.30pm and confirm it, then look at Friday and Saturday and Sunday, you see it's still there. If I go to Monday next week, it's not there. So today, tomorrow, the day after, the day after that, four flights in a row. Now. If we get the game running again, we should start seeing other options turning up. And we also have a maximum capacity of 25 commercial flights. That's dictated by the size of our air traffic control tower. Later on we're going to be getting 75 for a medium air traffic control tower or uh, 200 for a large ATC. There's also radars that add to that number, but generally my airports seem to top out somewhere around 150 just in terms of I don't have enough stands to keep up with 200 flights. 
I think to do that you would need to have many, many small stands. Alright, Havana's offering... no they're not. I got tricked. Um, that's 4 out of 30 assigned. So this contract has a maximum of 30 flights that it can offer me. Let's speed up and see if any more pop in. And you see, they're not really offering new flights very quickly. And that's why I typically forget about the star rating of airlines and just sign them all up. I'm sure it has some value in some context, but to date, like I say, I don't know what the difference is. And now we've got our option to put in some flights. Now again, you can't book it too close to the current time. Um, if I go back, um, I'll just pause for a minute. Okay, Goose Wings is offering five flights, and you've got these toggles here. Now at the moment, we only have small stands, so only small flights are going to show up here, regardless of what the airline contract can give me. But, um, if you are later on and you've got small, medium and large, you might want to filter it so that you can actually see which type is available. Unfortunately, you can't filter it at this point. It's a real shame. But such is life. So, let's pop this in. Um, you can't have them at the same exact time, I think. Let's have a look. That's 3.30, that's 3.35. If I get my next one, assuming there is another, here we go, here's one and two. Oh no, I can put it at 3.35, there you go. Um, so, there's not really any significant harm in putting them at the same time. The thing to be aware of is it can cause issues with taxiing. Generally, it's a good idea to keep them at least five minutes apart. Oops. But let's try to demonstrate what happens if you don't. So, there we go. Let's, uh, let's use this little feature that I didn't remember existed. Uh, flat schedule. Right, the current time is 12.45, we'll speed up the game. Status parked, I don't think so. Oh, that's showing me general aviation as well, right. <laughs> no wonder I'm confused. Okay, let's forget about that little view, it's really not that helpful. If I go to G for flight monitor... <laughs> much easier because this only shows commercial flights. Right, we have our first plane. It has a capacity of 18. Uh, sorry, that's not capacity. It had 13 passengers arriving and 18 which are going to be departing. Um. Oh yes, I was waiting for this so let's uh, speed up again. And it may not actually cause any noticeable issue right now because there's only three, but I want to see what happens with the taxi. So... Any moment now CC222 will land, there we go. And then five minutes after one, should be another one straight away, two, three. So it's already 15.55, but all of these planes were scheduled to land at um, 15.35. So by having them all stacked up, you're already causing your planes to be delayed. It's better to have them spaced out, at least 5, but probably more like 10 or 15 minutes, so that the runway's not becoming a blockage for you. 
as it is having all these general aviation flights and all of these commercial flights there's a good chance your runway is going to be backing up every now and then I believe it was the last episode we talked about ramp agents because we were hiring people and we enabled the ramp agent service route. If I watch one of these planes, um, here's a ramp agent. So this person has a duty at the moment to walk around the plane and inspect it. And if I were to click on here, you can see he's currently 90% up. Sorry, I think that was a she. Nope, he. Um, so 100% done, all good. So then he runs away. The service round is one of the many services that you charge for. If I go to economy and look at fees, which I can't modify right now. Um, parking, catering. Nope, I could be wrong. It's not one you charge for. But it would uh, factor into um, spotting accidents before they become a problem. Alright, here we see we've got planes running late. And that's largely because they landed so late. So these are all back out now. And then they'll queue up. And then General Aviation fits in as well. And we've just received a million dollar bonus for getting our commercial flights up and running. So this is one of the few times I'll actually bother looking at the email. Yeah, it doesn't even tell you what the actual achievement was, but I'm pretty sure it's five commercial flights landing and taking off that triggers that. <laughs> 